Hello and welcome. So some of you are wondering how I achieved 10 gigabit speeds on my SG3210XHP-M2 switch from TP-Link. And I was simply using some SFP modules from fs.com. Now I'll leave a link in the video description below specifically for these modules. And you can consider this video a recommendation towards FS uh, transceivers. I've owned only two others in the past for my Ubiquiti equipment. I've used both of those modules extensively for over a year and a half. Absolutely no failures there, no troubles, they just work. Um, and so far I've had these modules for over a month and I haven't experienced any issues with them either. They simply just work. So we're gonna be testing out these modules or I'll at least be showing you finally uh, these modules in, I guess, production, I don't know. We're gonna be using them and I'll show you that they can achieve 10 gig speeds. And before we do that, I do wanna give you a little bit more information about these specific ones that I have in my hand. As I mentioned before, these are SFP plus RJ45. So you can hit 10 gig speeds up to around 80 meters using Cat6A or better uh, ethernet cables. And they use about 1.8 watts of power according to fs.com. I don't have a way to test that out aside plugging it in my switch and monitoring the difference in power, but I don't think it's worth it and it probably won't even show up with the equipment I have. And of course, uh, probably the next most notable thing here is they have a uh, mean time failure rate, an empty, empty mean time between failure rate of 5 million hours. It's a heck of a lot of hours. I will probably never see these fail while I own them. Um, I plan on using them from this point forward in my TP-Link switch and will probably never take them out for any reason, just like I do in my current Ubiquiti uh, setup. They are, those modules are in there forever and I plan to use them forever. Okay, so with those uh, like notable items out of the way, if you wanna know more information, of course, you'll get a link in the video description below for more uh, stats for nerds, I suppose, from that link. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and get these installed on the switch and we'll do some simple tests with them and see what they can do. No surprises, I promise, they just they just work. <laughs> all right, here is our SG3210XHP, and we are simply just gonna insert these modules like so. First one, and the second one. All right, now this blue cable is going back to the MacBook Pro, and this black cable here is going to the server right here. So both the server and MacBook Pro are obviously 10 gig capable. Um, and that's how we're gonna do this test. What we're looking at here is the web UI for Unraid, which is a Linux operating system. And we are going to make it the iperf3 host or the listener. So I'm gonna open a web terminal here and I'm simply gonna type in iperf three dash s so that stands for server so now it is listening and i'm going to drag a terminal window over here for my macbook pro and we are going to oops we are going to um, tell it to send some data to our server which is 192.168.0.4 the first test is just a simple tcp test just to see what we get so we kick that off and our bandwidth immediately jumps up to 9.4 gigabit per second um, our server is doing some work here, as you can tell by the CPUs uh, being loaded or worked. All right, cool. Uh, so we're gonna run that again, command again, but this time we're gonna do a parallel test with uh, 10 parallel connections or sending units, whatever have you, I don't know. And we're still getting about 9.4 gigabit per second. And our CPU is actually, you know, exercising down there. Nothing too crazy, nothing overwhelming. Okay. Uh, those are the results there. And just for fun, we're gonna do a UDP test with a target bandwidth of, uh, we'll go for 10 gigabyte or 10 gigabit per second. Let's see what we get for that test. And again, we are straddling about 9.4, uh, 9.5 with a UDP test. So um, I think that works pretty well. Um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what else to say. All right, and there you have it. So obviously the modules worked out as one would expect. Um, I would say that FS modules or transceivers are good. Um, I've been using mine for about a year and a half now and haven't had any issues. 
These are relatively new. I've had them for just over a month. And again, they've been perfectly fine thus far. I don't anticipate anyone having any serious issues with their transceivers or modules. So you can, again, consider this as a recommendation to buy their products. And again, there will be a link in the video description below for this. And uh, just so everyone knows, obviously FS did send me these modules. Um, I did ask for them specifically. Um, so I didn't pay for them or no money was exchanged between us um, for this. They just sent these for free. Uh, so that concludes this video. If you guys have any more questions specifically about this video or I guess really anything, I'll do my best to answer them, of course. And with all that being said, I wanna thank each and every one of you for watching and I will see you all next time. See ya.